Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the new Yankee workshop. How about a blanket chest built from pine and lined with aromatic cedar? Welcome to Nantucket, a beautiful island about 30 miles out to sea off the coast of Massachusetts. And today I'm here to show you one of my favorite houses, this one right here. They say it was built in 1790 in downtown Nantucket, which is about two miles in that direction. And then in 1846, they moved it to this location by bringing it over the ice of the frozen harbor. It's one of those houses that's filled with antiques, much like the ones that I'm trying to build at the new Yankee workshop. There's a few pieces I want to show you inside. Come on. One thing this house has no shortage of is chest. Here's a nice one right here. Wide pine boards and beautifully dovetailed down along the corner, all hand done. And over here is even a better one. Talk about craftsmanship. Very fine dovetailing. Beautifully done. Well, to build our blanket chest today, I only need a few special materials. One of them is this hinge, which I picked up at the local hardware store. It's a piano hinge, three feet long, brass plated. Then the next thing that I need is some cedar, aromatic cedar. And I got this down at the lumber yard. Smells great. And they claim it'll keep the insects and bugs from eating all the clothes and blankets we're going to put in this chest. And then, of course, the more basic material is this 1 by 12 pine. I like to use the 12 inch width because it gives me the least amount of waste and the most flexibility to cut my pieces. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is cut the rough links. And I have a list of all the pieces that I need. And I'll cut each piece one or two inches longer than what I really need. The reason for that is, is I don't want to commit to final length now. I want to have some extra wood to square them up a little bit later on. So the first piece I'm going to cut is for our legs, and they should be about 22 inches long. For this ripping part of the operation, I like to use my table saw. And more importantly, I make sure that I have a very sharp, fine-toothed carbide tip blade so that I end up with the smoothest possible cuts that I can get. Now, with all my pieces of stock ripped to the correct width, I'm now ready to go to squaring up and cutting to the exact length. And to do that, I'm going to use this power miter box. And this one has a little added feature, which are these extensions running on each side. Now, the one here on the left side also has a fancy tape rule built into it. And it has this adjustable stop. And I know that when I set my cross here, in this case, I want to set it at 21 and a quarter inches, I know that that's the precise distance between this stop and the side of the blade. So now I'm ready to cut my pieces. Now, I don't want to just put it in there and cut it. The first thing I want to do is square it, because I'm not sure whether this edge is perfectly square. So I'll just take off a little bit. And I slide it down against my stop and make the cut. OK, that takes care of all the pieces that I have to cut to exact length. These are the corner styles, the long rails, the short rails, and the cleats to support the bottom. Now I'm ready to glue up the top. Now notice for my top, I'm using four boards rather than one or two wide ones. And I do that so that I have more stability and a much stronger top. And when I do the glue up, I pay attention to the growth rings. Here, they're curving up. Here, they're down. Here, they're up. And here, they're down. And that will add to more stability and make the top less likely to warp. Also notice that very little glue has been squeezed out. Clamp with just enough pressure to hold the boards together. Believe me, I've learned the hard way. If you put too much pressure, it might fall apart. So now I think we'll set this aside, and then we're ready for some grooving and mortising. Now there's the groove, 
and our two corner styles, which in fact make the legs for the blanket chest, fit together like this. Now the groove is just cut with a router mounted underneath a router table and a nice long fence with a 3 8 inch grooving bit. Now to cut the tongue, which is in the other piece, which will actually join the corner together, I'm going to use the table saw. And I've set the blade so that I end up with a 3 8 inch tongue and it's set at about 3 16 inch depth. Now to set up for the rest of the removal of material for the tongue, I'm going to use the grooved piece as a guide and I want the edge of the blade to line up with the edge of my groove. Now for the depth, I want to raise the blade up so that it's about 3 eighths of an inch high. That fits pretty good. Now let's set the legs up as they will be when the chest is all put together. Okay. Now with all my legs set up in the position that they're going to be when the cabinet is built, I can see that the front pieces are the full width legs and the side pieces will have the joints in it. Generally you want to have the full pieces towards the front. Now this mortise that I just cut is the one that will be used to connect the rails together. And with all the legs in the right position, you want to label the top of each piece for that mortise because there is a front and a back, there is a top and a bottom, and you don't want to end up cutting a mortise down on the bottom of the leg. Now for that mortise, I just used the three and a half, the three eighths inch bit as we had in the grooving operation, except that I've added this stop, which will give me a three and a half inch mortise. Okay, now I'm ready to do the other three legs. Okay, now the mortise I've just cut down here is used to connect the bottom rails together. And to cut that, I use the same router setup with a stop block in a new position and a reference line to plunge down into the router bit. Let me show you. Okay, so I end up with a three inch mortise that's four inches up from the bottom of the leg. Now I'm ready to do the other three legs. Now to join my rails to my legs, I need to make tenons in all the rails. And to do that, the first thing I do is clamp a block of wood to my rip fence. And that'll act as a gauge for the shoulder cut, which is the one that runs right along here. It also allows me to use my T-square in combination with the rip fence and not get any binding or kickback. So now the thing that I have to do is run all my rails through both ends. Okay, now the next thing I have to do is make my shoulder cuts on the edges. And I'll do that to both the top edge and the bottom edge of all the bottom rails, but just the bottom edge of the top rails. Well, the next thing that I want to do is remove the rest of this material. And for that I don't need this guide anymore and I don't need my T-square. What I'll do is take one of our legs and using the mortise groove that you can see, line up my blade for removing the rest of that material right about there. And for the depth, I'll just use this sample tenon and lower it down. And in fact, it's about 3 eighths of an inch high. And now we'll just run all the pieces through. Okay. 
Now I've removed my regular table saw blade and installed this adjustable dado head. And I've set it up so that it'll remove about a quarter of an inch in width. And it's also set up to be right in the center of a piece of three quarter inch stock. The cut will be three eighths of an inch deep. And I need to make that cut on every one of these rails so that later it'll accept my panels. Okay, now the next thing that I have to do is take our legs and run a groove between the two mortises so that it'll accept our panels. But I don't want to run beyond this bottom mortise, so I've installed a piece of tape here which will tell me where to stop so that won't happen. Now there's one more thing I want to do before I take the dado head off. But first I'm going to take a piece of tape and put it right on the table here. And what that'll indicate is a point that's about a quarter of an inch back from where the blade starts cutting. And I'm going to take these two pieces here and run a groove all the way up, stopping about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And that'll be our pieces for our top. 